Welcome to the Gorilla 5 video series. In this lesson, we're going to learn about managing elements, part one. Some of the things we're going to go over are how to create and delete elements, how to manage element categories, how to attach elements to scenes, and lastly, board IDs. So from the Gorilla Scheduling Manager, we're going to select the Elements button underneath the Scheduling Module. Now this will take us directly to our Element Manager screen. Now notice that the Breakdown Sheet screen appears behind the Element Manager screen. And this will happen every single time you open the Elements uh, Manager from the Scheduling Module. So let's take a few seconds to explore this screen. Notice that on the left-hand side, we will see our list of categories. And these, this, of course, is the same list of categories that we will see that we saw in our Breakdown Sheets module. In order to explore some of the elements within the categories, we simply click on any category name. So for example, I'm clicking on the cast members category, and notice that our cast members will appear underneath the cast members category. In order to edit a, an element name or anything about that element, you simply click on the element and notice it will be highlighted. And then, of course, on the detail section of the element manager, uh, the name of the element will appear and all the tabs underneath that particular element will pertain to the element that we are on. Let's go ahead and create a new element. Now we've did this in the breakdown sheet screen by clicking on the green plus button and this of course adds elements on the fly directly to our breakdown sheets. But our element manager allows us to create elements uh, irregardless of the breakdown sheet that they are on. So let's go ahead and do that. Now there are a few ways to create elements. One way is to select the green plus button next to the name of the category that we want to add an element to. And notice the Add New Element tooltip. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Props button here, the Props Add category, Add Element. I'm going to type in the name of an element and click OK. Now we will open up the Props category and notice that the Gun element is now highlighted. And consequently also, the Gun element is named here on the top of the Element Manager screen, and therefore we can start modifying the description for this particular element. So if I wanted to type in a very long description, you can go ahead and do that. And this is helpful because you don't really want to type in a very long element name in your short name. Uh, of elements here because remember we had that issue with our breakdown sheets. Notice any long name that you have will be an issue on your breakdown sheet boxes if you're going to use that printing report. But you can go ahead and type in as, as long as as much as you want in terms of description in this description field and then print out an art department report which will show all the description for all of your elements. Now that's one way to create an element. Another way is to simply go up to the uh, File pull-down menu, select the New Element command, and same thing, you're going to get the uh, Add Element dialog box. Now, if you want, you can select a different category here. So if I wanted to add an element to the Costumes category, I can go ahead and do that and click OK. And notice down here that the costume under the costumes category, the new element that I created uh, appears highlighted. And of course, it is now highlighted here. Now, of course, you don't have to have all these categories open up like this. If I wanted to close up a category and just work with this particular category, for example, costumes, I can do that. And that's just organization. If I wanted to close them all again uh, and even close the category list here, this will just reset the categories so that you can open and close the management of all those elements. Now I want to show you how to delete an element. So let's go ahead, for example, and click on the props category. And let's find that gun here that we uh, created. And I'm going to delete now this particular element. In order to do that, we go up to the file pull down menu and select the delete option, delete element option. 
And this, of course, is going to give you a warning to go ahead and delete the element. It will also remove all instances of this element on corresponding breakdown sheet. So that's important to note. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Notice it disappears from our props list here. And we have a blank detail. We're not, we're no, we basically have no elements selected right now. I can go ahead and select another element to make it active. And now, of course, I can edit that information and add more information to that particular element. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how to add, an, uh, add scenes to a particular element. Now, again, we did that in the uh, breakdown sheet screen, of course. We can click on a prop and then add uh, a figurine or any one of these elements' costumes to a breakdown sheet. But in the element manager, we can also attach elements to scenes sort of in the reverse manner. So, for example, let's go ahead and select the hat which is the element that we just created here in the costumes category. I'm going to select the scenes tab and notice there are no scenes attached to this element because we just created it here in the element manager. Now I'm going to click on this green plus button over here. Now when I do that, I'm going to see a list of all my breakdown sheets. All I need to do is select here in the little checkbox all the scenes that I want to attach the element costumes to and click on the import button. And what that's going to do is it's going to pop over all those scenes to this particular element. And here you could see them. And it says here this element is needed in the following scenes. And these are the four scenes that are attached to that particular element. Now I can do this with anything. So let's go to cast members real quick. Click on Amanda. And notice that in the Scenes tab, I'm showing all the scenes that Amanda is in. Uh, a very nice way to very quickly see what scenes are attached to any element. Now, these are all the scenes I attached or we attached uh, here in the Breakdown Sheets module. Or they might have been imported directly from our screenplay. And they were already tagged, as we showed you in a previous lesson. And you can see them again here. Now, the next thing I want to show you is very quickly, uh, and you'll see this in a lot of the screens, is you notice that there's an I button here a lot of times on the right-hand side of the screen. These are little assist or help buttons here, it says here, about this screen. If you click on that button, this is going to tell you all about elements. And this is going to, uh, just a very quick help. You can read this, and it'll explain a little bit about elements, how to, how to create a new element, which is what I just went over. Um, and how to uh, edit and manage categories, which is the next thing we're going to show you right now. I'm going to close that button up right now, that screen. Now let's go ahead and manage these categories. Now let me collapse a little bit of these here. Now categories, of course, are uh, the names that elements are created in. And you can have as many categories as you want. These are just the default categories that Gorilla creates when you create a brand new schedule or when you import a screenplay. But we can add as many as we want. We can also modify these categories. So let's go ahead and add a new category. From the Edit pull-down menu, we're going to select the Manage Categories option. And this brings up a, another screen of our categories. Now let's uh, look at this screen closely. First, it's going to show you the number of elements that you have created for each particular category. Notice the little edit button here. This allows you to edit that particular category name or uh, some of the characteristics of that category in terms of the color. So let's say, for example, I wanted to edit the props category and I wanted to um, make it italicized, underlined, and change the color to a, that's fine, let's try a green color. And notice, of course, it will change the color of the category throughout. So that's something that you can do and have a little fun with in terms of your categories. Now, if you want to create a brand new category, notice the green plus sign up here. It's going to add a category. Let's go ahead and click that. And let's say we want to add a CGI category because we're going to do some animation to that particular, uh, to, this, to our schedule. And here it appears down at the bottom here. Let's go ahead and click on the edit button and give it a color. That give it try to give it a color that we don't have. That's uh, that's fine. And hit close. It's a little light, but we can change that if we wanted to. 
and go ahead and click close. We'll have to click this button here to reset our categories because we just created a new one. And now we have a brand new category here. Notice it appears down here also on our breakdown sheets. And we can, of course, add elements to this particular category. Now, in order to delete a category, same thing. We'll go to the Manage Categories. We're going to click on the red Delete button. Now, this will give you a warning, of course, also that you're about to delete this particular category. And if there are any elements attached to this category, they will also be deleted. And this cannot be undone. So that's a very important thing to remember. Go ahead and close that. Now, the last thing I want to show you in this lesson is board IDs. Notice that if we go up here to the very top, it'll say board ID and then, of course, name. This is the board ID right here. Now, not every element has a board ID. So let's go into vehicles, for example, and select our vehicle. Notice that board ID is not here. Now, we can add it. We can simply go ahead and type in anything we want for a board ID. Um, what a board ID is uh, is very important on your strip board because when you go to schedule your scenes on your strip board, you will see... Uh, on the right hand side of the screen numbers and those numbers correspond to cast members so you can very quickly see on a strip board what cast members are attached to what scenes they're not so much important with other elements like costumes and and uh, props and things like that but if you wanted to track your ids for your elements other than cast members you can certainly do that by manually entering entering an id but let's go to cast members for example and select amanda and Amanda has an ID of two, and Barney of one, and Chubby of three. Now, if I create a brand new cast member, now let's go ahead and do that. We're going to create a new cast member here. And notice what happens. Automatically, Gorilla will take the next board ID, which is four, and give it to that particular cast member. Now, we can change that. We can just simply go in there and give it a five if we want. Um, it doesn't matter in terms of... Uh, what that board ID is uh, for any other element, but for cast members it's important because that's going to show on the strip board for that particular scene. Now, you can automatically populate your IDs by selecting under the Schedule pull-down menu this Update Cast Member Board IDs uh, feature. Now, what this, what this is going to do is this is going to change all your board IDs for the cast members, and look at this very carefully, based on the occurrences of the character. So the characters with the most occurrences will have a lower board ID, one, two, three, etc. So basically your lead actors should have the lower board IDs, ones, twos, threes, etc. And your your characters that have less dialogue, less occurrences and schedules will be the, the, the 20s, the 22, 23, 24, etc. So I'm going to click on this override locked button, and what this is going to do, notice that Sophia was now reset to four, because it just resets them beginning from one, and obviously we only have four cast members, so we don't need a number five. Now we can lock IDs also, and what locking an ID does is simply does that. Now this ID is locked, and it will not change. Well, let me do it this way. Let me give Sophia an ID of five, the way it was before and now lock that ID. If I go back to update my cast member board IDs, you look at the options here. Do you want to override the locked, which is what I selected the first time, or keep the locked? Now, if I select keep locked, notice that Sophia didn't change. All the others, they didn't change either because they were all the same IDs, but Sophia remained in the, in the ID of five. And in this way, you can manage your IDs on your boards in case you add more cast members and take them away. That's a wrap. Have a great shoot.